Hi everybody, I hope this video finds you well. In today's video, we are going to be introducing our course and going over the syllabus for our class. My name is Ben Mitchell and I'll be your instructor for the Math 2020 term for Math 150, 150S, Elementary Statistics, and Probability with Support. Our class is a fully online asynchronous course. So in this video, not only will we be discussing the standard syllabus as well as course policies, but I will also discuss the general structure of our course. Let's begin though with some basic core course information. Again, my name is Ben Mitchell. Our course is elementary statistics and probability with support. Our section number is 0751. Points of contact. In other words, how do you get a hold of me during the term if you have questions or if you need to reach out? Well, we have several different ways for you guys to get a hold of me. First of all, as you can see here on the top of our syllabus, we'll be having office hours via Zoom each week. There's two hours per week, one on Mondays from 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. and one on Tuesday from 2 p.m. to 3 p.m. Each week on the morning of the office hour meeting or the Zoom meeting, you guys will receive a link uh, so that you can use Zoom and hop onto the meeting. These office hours are a great time to hop on and have a sort of live discussion about any questions you might be having about any of the material we're covering in our course. So office hours, that's your first main point of contact, it happens twice a week, Mondays 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. and Tuesday 2 p.m. to 3 p.m. When we get around to exams and exam weeks and things like that, we'll also probably have some additional office hours, but these two times are the ones that are going to be happening every week on the dot. Your second uh, point of contact, if you can't make the online office hours or if you have a question that comes up at a time that mm, isn't near these two hours each week, is email. Uh, my email address is here. It's bmitchell at elcamino.edu. You guys are always welcome to send an email if you have questions about the content of our class or about the structure of our class or anything that you need to ask about. Email is your main and fastest way uh, to get a response. Finally, uh, even though it's not listed here at the top of our syllabus, something we'll be discussing a little bit later on is on our Canvas page, which is going to be our main source of all the electronic info you need for our class. There are also discussion boards for each major assignment, uh, uh, practice exercises, reviews for the exams, all the sort of different um, pieces and assignments of our course have corresponding discussion boards. The discussion boards are another great way uh, for you to be able to ask questions and get help not only from me, but also from the other students in your class. Discussion boards will also help you guys uh, have a little bit of sort of internal discussions about how to approach different problems, uh, the quizzes, studying for exams, etc. So again, the three main points of contact here, right, if you have questions or if you want to reach out during the semester, office hours if you'd like to do it sort of live and at least mm, as in person as we can be via zoom mondays and tuesdays 11 a.m to 12 p.m on monday 2 p.m to 3 p.m on tuesday email bmitchell at elcamino.edu or canvas discussion boards okay now that we have the sort of really core information uh, especially those points of contact super important for an online course such as ours let's talk a little bit about what our class actually is and our class, as its name would indicate, is Elementary Statistics and Probability. Uh, there's a big sort of long discussion here of exactly what that means. I'm not going to go ahead and discuss all of that now. But the main idea is that our course is really an introduction or survey to statistics. Statistics, as we'll see, is really its own branch of science. Uh, we teach it as a math class, but it is really its own science. It's the science of data, as we'll see. And that means that a lot of our beginning work is just going to be setting up a foundation uh, for statistics. Then we'll start to learn uh, different situations to apply statistics in. In the middle of our course, we'll have a slight detour to learn about probability, which is sort of a topic inside of statistics all into itself. And then once we have probability as a mechanism, we'll be able to return and do more advanced statistics. So we'll get to see a lot of different uh, applications of statistics to data, to making decisions, um, and we'll get to see it apply to a lot of different fields and disciplines. We also uh, have a sort of unique situation that we are not just a Math 150 course, but we're also a Math 150 with support course. So 
Uh, there's a brief description of what support is here. Um, support was something that El Camino College introduced uh, a year or two ago uh, that was giving sort of some additional uh, support. I am trying to mimic basically what large uh, universities did with discussion or recitation sections where you might be in a large uh, lecture of hundreds of people and then you would break out into smaller groups to sort of discuss and do additional practice and really sort of get a more more direct um, learning experience. Um, being fully online, our support is going to take a slightly different form. Uh, for you guys in our course, the support aspect is mostly going to be uh, some additional practice and a little bit of sort of prerequisite review. Uh, there'll be uh, chances for you guys to just work on some extra things, um, make sure that you're comfortable with the topics that we're discussing, and also get some feedback on some of the more prerequisite material. So. Uh, you can sort of think about the support as really just trying to make sure that you're comfortable with all the main material that we're presenting. And if you find anything challenging or a little bit more difficult, the support will be there to give you some additional practice, let you get some additional feedback, all those sort of things there. Uh, so in terms of uh, now that we understand what our class is and what the support aspect sort of means, we should talk a little bit about the required materials here. So the first thing, the textbook. As you'll see here with where it discusses the required text, there is no required textbook for this course. Uh, I've written a set of my own course notes that will be posted and periodically updated on your course website, the Canvas website. Uh, and those are going to replace uh, the standard textbook, so you don't need to buy a textbook for this course. Uh, those course notes have discussions just like a normal textbook would have, so there's things to read in there. They also have examples and exercises for you to try, just like a normal textbook would. Um, if you really want a very traditional textbook, uh, the textbook that I used to use before I wrote my own set of course notes uh, was uh, by Moore called The Basic Practice of Statistics. You're welcome to get a copy of that textbook if you want. It's not my, well, I, I mean, compared to, of course, to my own notes, it's not my favorite textbook, um, but it can be useful if you want. It's definitely not necessary, though. The course notes that I've written that I'll post for you guys is sufficient along with the lecture videos and the practice exercises and all that stuff to be totally fine in our class. So there's no need to go out and purchase a textbook for our course. What is required for our class then? Well, you definitely need to make sure that you have a calculator capable of statistical tests. A TI-84 plus model is recommended. Uh, to be honest, anything TI-84 and above, so that means TI-84, TI-84 plus, TI-84 silver, uh, TI-87, 89, titanium, whatever TI model you can find that is beyond the 84 will be sufficient for our class. The reason that I strongly recommend that you get a TI model calculator uh, rather than some of the other brands is because the demonstrations in the lecture videos and if you reach out and email me, the calculator that I have is a TI model. So it'll be easier to follow along if you also have a TI calculator. Now, uh, the TI-84 Plus and beyond any model beyond that generally are somewhat expensive. Um, if this is your only sort of math course and you don't foresee needing a calculator for other things, uh, you don't have to purchase a calculator. El Camino College does have a calculator loan program, and you should have already received some information from me uh, via email and also posted on our Canvas site about how to borrow a calculator for the upcoming term. I strongly recommend that if you do choose to go down the route of borrowing a calculator, you do it as soon as possible. Uh, that's for two reasons. One is we begin to use our calculator almost immediately in our class. And two, in the past, sometimes that calculator loan program has run out of calculators. So the sooner you do it, the better your chances are of making sure you don't actually have to go out and buy a calculator. If you have any questions about the calculator you're planning to use, you can always feel free to email me or reach out through Canvas, and I can make sure that the calculator you have is going to be appropriate for what we need to do in our course. So the really the only required material, as described here, is a calculator. You need a calculator to deal with some of the statistical tests that we're going to be doing where the computations are just too time consuming to do sort of by hand. Let's talk about the other sort of major thing that we're going to be using, which is Canvas. So let's take a quick look at our Canvas page and see some of the components on there. 
So this is the home page of our Canvas web page. I am, as you can see, the home page of our Canvas site is also a copy of the syllabus. So we've been sort of working our way through and we're down here at uh, this point uh, talking about the calculator. Um, but we're gonna be using Canvas for a variety of things. So I'd like to quickly go over some of the components. You can access Canvas by going onto your uh, My ECC and then you should see Canvas web pages for all the classes that you're currently taking. Ours. Uh, Math 150-0751. So what else is it going to be on Canvas? Well, let's go through each of the components that we'll be using. First of all, there's an announcements page to Canvas. You can see that already we have a few basic announcements. There's an announcement about the calculator loan program. There was a few initial announcements just getting you guys ready as we get towards the start of our class on Monday, August uh, 24th. And then you can also see that there's a little note there about our first Zoom meeting, which is an optional meet and greet in case you wanna introduce yourself or ask any questions that you might have after having watched this syllabus video. So this announcement section is gonna be very important. This is also going to be where at each week, uh, usually on Sunday night or Monday morning, I'll post a schedule uh, of what I recommend you guys complete for the upcoming week. That schedule will also sort of remind you about any assignments that you have that are coming up that are due or any upcoming exams, things like that. So this announcements page is gonna be very important. This is where anything that, as its name would imply, is a major announcement will end up. There's also an assignments uh, page to Canvas. You can see that there's already a uh, 150 test assignment. This 150 test assignment I detailed in one of the announcements, but basically it's there to make sure that you're comfortable submitting through Canvas. Every assignment that you will be completing uh, for our course is submitted via Canvas. So you wanna make sure that you do this test assignment and are comfortable submitting PDF files through Canvas. Uh, a quick discussion about these uh, assignments is you'll notice that if you click on this assignment, um, it, the directions for the assignment actually says to go ahead and look in the file section of Canvas for the actual document. And this is how all the assignments are going to work for our class. So quizzes and exams, you'll be submitting them through the assignments page of Canvas, but all the sort of questions or problems or however you want to phrase it will actually be found in the file section. So let's go ahead and take a quick look at the file section. The file section is probably going to be one of the most important components of our Canvas web page because this is where electronic copies of all of the documents you need for our course can be found. You can see that there's a ton of folders already up there. There's things for the calculator loan program, so if you need information about that, you can look there. There's, file, there's folders for the course notes. Uh, if we look in there, if we take just a quick look at that course notes, you can see that the first part of that sort of substitute for a textbook is already posted. Let's just go ahead and take a quick look at that. Uh, if we go ahead and click on that, you can view it in Canvas or you can download it if you prefer. Uh, this is what I mean by it sort of uh, resembling a textbook. You'll notice that there are discussions in here, but then there are also examples for you to try. Uh, if you go sort of th through, right, you'll see again sort of discussion, text to actually sort of read through, generally uh, vocabulary is defined in here, all that sort of stuff, and then there's examples to try. When you guys are reading through this, um, I would recommend if you find yourself with the time that when you see one of these examples, uh, you try it uh, yourself and then you read through the solutions that follow afterwards. So again, remember, this is what's going to be replacing our textbook. All right, what else uh, can we find in the file section? Well, uh, not too much else is posted yet, but there's information about electronic submissions. There's also a folder for office hour notes. At the end of every Zoom office hour, I'll be taking all the whiteboards that we might use during our discussion, saving them and posting them in the office hour notes. That means that if you happen to miss an online office hour, you're not able to attend, or you could only attend part of it, you can still see the stuff that was discussed posted in that office hour notes folder. Uh, solutions to the quizzes and exams will be here. Review guides for the midterms and exams will be here. Suggested exercises, which is additional practice. S the syllabus document, if you don't wanna just read it on the front page, if you want a PDF a copy of our syllabus, it's in the syllabus folder. The take home quizzes will be found here and the test assignment. So let's go ahead and look at that test assignment since that's what sort of brought us to the file section. So you'll notice that if you click on the test assignment, you can actually find the assignment here. So the, again, the questions are found in the file section, and then you submit through the assignments page. 
So if you click on the Math 150 test assignment, there is uh, some directions. There's just a couple quick questions for you to answer. Uh, some of them are just background information so I can get to know you guys a little bit better and tailor some of our examples to your particular interests and majors and fields of study. Some of them are also just going to be some data collection so that when we do examples, I can actually use some of your real data. Again, remember this test assignment uh, is mainly just there to help you guys make sure you're comfortable submitting via Canvas. Uh, this is basically just to simulate what the take home quiz is and the exams will sort of be like. All right, what else on Canvas? So far, we've talked about the home page, the announcements, the assignments, the files. Well, there'll also be a section for grades. So Canvas will help you guys take care of all of the grades. So if you want to monitor how you're doing in the class, you'll be able to find that in the grades section here. Uh, if we also take a look, uh, there is also a syllabus page, which is our home page. So you can, again, always take a look at if you have any questions about how our class sort of is running. So again, the and finally, uh, there is a discussions page on Canvas as well. You can see that we have a general course questions uh, as our only discussion board right now. So if you ever have any general course questions, you can uh, post there. Otherwise, there'll also be discussion boards for each take home quiz, the suggested exercises, Anytime uh, you sort of want to ask questions about our course, you should be able to find a discussion board that sort of matches where that question is coming from and be able to post there. I really highly recommend making use of the discussion boards as much as possible, uh, mainly because when you ask a question on the discussion board, if one of your fellow students or myself gets back to you and answers your question, then not only do you benefit from the answer, but anybody else who takes a look at the discussion board will also benefit from that. So it sort of simulates, you know, asking a question in class class. So if you ask, you know, a question and somebody else had that same question, when they hear that answer, or in this case, when they read the response, they benefit as well. That's really the advantage of the discussion boards over directly emailing. I know sometimes you might have a sort of individual or maybe private question that you want to ask. Always feel free to do so via email. You in no way have to post exclusively through the discussion board. But if you ever have a content question, you're just unsure how to approach something. If you feel like it, I strongly recommend using the discussion board so that other people can benefit from your question. Again, almost everything for our course is going to be coming through this Canvas website. So again, all the sort of assignments will be submitted through here. Electronic copies of all the documents will be found on Canvas. You really want to make sure that you're actively checking in on Canvas on a regular basis to make sure you're not missing anything. All right, let's get back to our syllabus then. All right, so we've talked about the required things for our class. Remember, no textbook is required. There's a set of course notes that'll be posted for you that'll replace a standard textbook. The only thing you need to make sure you get is a calculator, generally a TI-84 and above. And do remember that there is calculator loan information if you don't wanna have to go out and purchase one. So let's go to page two of our syllabus. Page two is mostly about the different course objectives. We're not going to discuss these right now. Also, the support objectives and the student learning outcomes. These things, uh, you can certainly go back as we go through our course and read through it. I think it does give a nice sense of satisfaction to read through these, you know, halfway through the course or towards the end of our semester and you know, convince yourself, wow, I actually did learn all these objectives. That's a nice feeling. It really shows progress here. But right now at the beginning of our class, these things not, not necessarily going to mean a lot. So let's instead go to page three. Page three is all about the sort of grading policies and the types of assignments you'll be doing here. So in terms of how your grades will be determined, we have three major categories that each get a percentage weight. So while each assignment has points associated with it, what really determines your grade are these weighted percentages. So we have three classes of assignments for our class. We have take home quizzes, which make up 20% of your grade. There will be three midterm exams that are 15% each. So that makes up 45% of your grade. And then a comprehensive or cumulative final, which makes up 35% of your grade. Our grading scale is the standard one. If your ending percentage is between 90 and 100, that's an A, B, 80 to 89, C, 70 to 79, D, 60 to 69, and F, 59% and below. The good thing about uh, using Canvas and everything is that you guys will be able to track what your current uh, course grade is with these weighted percentages already handled for you, so you can monitor how you're doing overall in our class. Let's talk about what each of these sort of groups of assignments sort of really means. So let's talk about the quizzes first. 
So there's going to be quizzes each week during the term, except directly following an exam. So once you take an exam, the sort of next week you'll have off from having to submit a quiz. For quizzes, you are allowed, if you want, to work in a group of up to three people. Um, that is, you'll notice it says May in there, so it's totally your choice. That means that if you start off the term and you work by yourself, and then by the middle of the term you've gotten to know some of the fellow your fellow students and you want to work with them, you're welcome to start working in a group later on in the term. If you begin the term working as a group and you find out it just doesn't really work for you, or maybe you know your uh, group mate schedules change or something like that, you don't have to continue working as a group. It's always your choice who you work with, or even if you decide to work in a group. The only requirement is that if you do work in a group, it can only be up to three people, so a maximum size of three people per group. And if you do choose to work as a group on whatever assignment, when you submit that, you just submit one set of answers. And you make sure that all your the people who are uh, submitting that uh, have their names on there and you will receive the same grade. Uh, so it's very important uh, that you, you, you recognize that if you do work as a group, everybody's going to receive the same grade on that assignment. Uh, quizzes will be due every week on Tuesdays by 11.59 p.m. So uh, every week on Tuesday is the date that your quizzes will be due and it's due by 11.59. And of course, you'll be submitting those through Canvas. Uh, quizzes will be submitted electronically, as mentioned, and again, uh, for Canvas, it's going to only accept the document if it's as a single PDF file. If you haven't had a lot of experience uh, scanning documents or putting things into a single PDF, there is a little uh, guide uh, posted on Canvas called the Electronic Submission Guidelines that walks you some of the through some of the free apps for scanning and compiling things into single PDF formats. Um, make sure that you try that test assignment to make sure you're comfortable with it and then avoid you know, turning things in late or in incorrect formats. What are the purpose of quizzes? Well, quizzes are really used as check-ins for the basic skills uh, that we are sort of covering each week in our class. Uh, quizzes are generally pretty computational in nature, um, so they're really just making sure you're keeping up with each thing we're doing each week. All right, midterms. So our midterm dates are already preset. They're going to be held on the Thursdays of weeks 4, 8, and 12. So basically every four weeks we'll have a midterm exam. Midterms uh, work a little bit differently from quizzes. Obviously for midterms you're not going to be working with anybody else, so no groups for midterms or anything. You're all going to be working on them individually. Midterms will be made available at 9 a.m. on each of those Thursdays, so the Thursday of week 4, 8, and 12, and then they're going to be due by 5 p.m. So you basically have an eight-hour window to complete each midterm. For midterms, you're allowed the access to your notes. Um, so if you take good notes uh, during our, you know, the lecture videos and things like that, they, you can make use of those while taking the midterms. You're not going to be allowed to discuss uh, the midterms with each other while you're taking it. Um, midterms will be submitted electronically, just like the quizzes, and again, must be submitted as a single PDF file. Uh, we're not going to have any makeup exams given, so make sure you're available those Thursdays of that week 4, 8, and 12. If uh, one of those midterm exams doesn't go particularly well, or if you do miss one due to an emergency or something, then we will replace your lowest midterm score by the final exam score if the final exam score is higher. So do keep in mind you have a little bit of flexibility there. If one of those midterms really doesn't go as well as you're hoping, if your final exam is better, you can use the final exam to replace one midterm score. What's the point of midterms? Well, midterms sort of assess the major skills and concepts in each section of our class. And what I really mean by section of our class is each quarter of our class, because we basically take a midterm every four weeks, which is a quarter of our course. Each midterm is pretty much a standalone um, exam, meaning it just covers the stuff uh, that we've introduced since the last midterm. So in other words, your first midterm Thursday of week four will cover everything we've discussed weeks one through four. Then your second midterm, which will be Thursday of week eight, will cover everything from weeks five through eight. And then your third midterm, which will be in Thursday of week 12, will cover everything from weeks nine through 12. So each midterm sort of tests you on the quarter of our course that we've covered. All right, your last piece, and obviously the largest weight overall, is your final exam. 
The final exam is what we call a comprehensive or cumulative exam, meaning stuff that we discuss from week one all the way through what we're discussing in week 15 and 16 has the possibility of showing up on your final exam. The final exam is held on the last day of class, which for us is Thursday, December 10th. The final exam is a little bit longer than the midterms, so you'll notice that it will be available at 9 a.m., just like the midterms, but you'll have all the way until 9 p.m. to finish it. So you'll have a 12-hour window instead of an 8-hour window. Once again, since you guys are taking the final exam uh, remotely and at home, you'll still be allowed access to your notes, so do definitely make sure to take good notes because it'll be beneficial. You're going to be using your notes for your quizzes, your midterms, your final, etc. Uh, once again, of course, for the final, you're not going to be allowed to discuss or work with anyone else. You're going to have to submit it individually. And again, it will be submitted electronically via Canvas as a single PDF file. And of course, the final exam, as you would expect, um, it will focus on the most important aspects of our entire class and really just make sure to check in so that you've covered everything that's required in this class. Okay, so again, just a quick recap, very simple sort of three categories quizzes each week, midterms every four weeks, and a final on the very last day of our class. That's pretty much what's going to determine your grade overall. If we were in person, this is usually the time where somebody would ask a question about extra credit. And what I'll let you guys know about uh, that is that while there are no individual extra credit assignments, uh, every assignment that you have quizzes, midterms, the final, they always come with a few extra credit questions. So while there won't be any separate extra credit assignments during our term, every normal assignment you do will always have at least one extra credit question sort of attached to it. Usually those extra credit questions allow me to give you guys something that maybe extends some of our topics or even sometimes is just a normal question that just didn't have enough room to fit on the rest of the quiz or exam. So always, you know, when you're doing these things, if you have the time, take a look at the extra credit that's associated with each assignment. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about sort of the general structure and important dates for our class. First, at the very beginning of our video, I mentioned that our class is fully online and asynchronous. So you might want to be wondering, where do you get the sort of lecture material? Where do you get the content for our course? As you guys know, there's practice exercises and course notes posted uh, to Canvas, but you want to make sure you also know that there are lecture materials. Just like if we were in person, you'd be coming to class and I would be sort of explaining the concepts to you, all the lecture materials for our fully online class are presented through videos posted on YouTube. You should have already received an email with the link to my YouTube channel that also has a playlist uh, specifically for your class called Math 150 Fall 2020. I'll update the class regularly about what videos have been posted, as well as also giving you a schedule for what videos you should be watching uh, by a certain point in our class. Associated with the different lecture videos are suggested exercises that I've written for practice, as well as the course notes. So generally the name of the lecture videos on YouTube correspond to the names of the different sections in your course notes, just like they would for a textbook. So you should be able to uh, sync things up very nicely there. Um, it's highly recommended, I mean, it's absolutely essential that you go through and you watch all of the sort of lecture videos to make sure you're comfortable with the concepts. And then of course, it is also strongly recommended that you do as many of the practice problems that are associated with each section uh, to make sure you're comfortable with the topics and concepts presented in the videos. Uh, as I mentioned, for additional practice, you also have your set of course notes replacing our standard textbook that can be found on Canvas. Uh, these course notes go over the same concepts covered in the lecture videos, but give you completely different examples and additional practice problems to try. So if you watch the videos and then read the course notes, the course notes should seem similar, but of course not exactly the same, and vice versa. If you choose to read the course notes first, then when you're watching the videos, the concepts in the videos should seem more familiar, but they're not going to be exactly the same. So I really want both of them to be resources for you. It's not like the course notes are just a repetition of the videos. They're both individual things that give you sort of extra practice and extra time with our concepts here. All right, let's go on to the next one. Uh, also, all documents, as we've mentioned for the class, will be found on our Canvas site. So if you ever need an electronic copy of anything for our class, you should be able to find it in the file section of Canvas. If you're having trouble finding something or you're not sure where it's located, you can always let me know or post on one of our discussion boards. But generally speaking, anything you need for our class in terms of a document should be found on our Canvas site. Remember, Canvas is also going to be used to keep track of our grades and provide a source of announcements for our class. 
Generally, if you've already been sort of checking your email and, and looking, you'll notice that I try to sort of uh, double uh, all the sort of announcements. I'll usually announce them on Canvas and then send an email with the same information. That's just because sometimes I know if you only send it one way, it can get be very easily missed. So sometimes you'll see the information repeated to you. You'll get an announcement via Canvas and then you'll get the same information via email. That's just to make sure that nobody misses what sort of the important things are going on in our class. Uh, this bullet here, as we sort of said, all assignments will be submitted electronically. Guidelines for electronic submissions can be found on our Canvas page. Um, make sure you strictly follow those, right? Um, grading electronic submissions is uh, a challenge. It's probably one of the biggest challenges on the instructor side of things uh, for actually making sure you guys get good feedback and all of that. So by you guys following the sort of electronic submission guidelines and sending in single PDF uh, versions, that makes it much easier for me to give you guys feedback on your assignments. So if you can follow those submission guidelines, it's much appreciated. Since our class is completely online, we sort of detailed the three main ways to ask questions or get help during our course, but I just want to reiterate them. First, uh, remember there's going to be online office hours via Zoom uh, each week. That was Monday, 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. and Tuesday, 2 to 3 p.m. Uh, if you ever sort of forget those, you can always find them at the top of our syllabus. Also remember that you'll receive a reminder email at the morning of each office hour with the meeting link. Sometimes we'll have additional uh, online office hours as well when we get near exams, but those two times, Monday 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. and Tuesday 2 to 3, those are always going to be happening every week. Second, remember there are Canvas discussion boards for each of the sets of suggested exercises, quizzes, etc. If you have questions about those, always feel free to post on the discussion boards. I will check uh, regularly to answer some of the questions, but I also hope that some of you guys can answer each other's questions, right? If we were in person, that would be a sort of major aspect of our course is having you guys be able to sort of talk amongst each other. And the discussion boards try to simulate that as best as possible. Finally, if there's a question that you're unable to ask in online office hours or post on Canvas about, you can always email directly me directly at bmitchell at elcamino.edu. A couple important dates. Uh, the last day to drop the course without notation on your permanent record and for a full re refund is Sunday, September 6th. So that is the Sunday after the conclusion of week two. So it gives you a little bit of time to see how you feel about this online format and make the decision about whether or not this is the right class for you. And then the last day to drop from the course overall while receiving a W, but perhaps avoiding a grade that you're not happy with is Friday, November 13th. Um, that is the Friday that follows week 12. For you guys, that means that you will get to make that decision after having taken all of your midterm exams. So you'll have a very good sense of where your sort of grade stands overall. For an online class, one thing I do want to mention is that uh, you want to make sure that if you do make the decision at some point to withdraw from our class, you make sure that you go ahead and officially withdraw from the class, meaning you go on and you drop yourself from the class. There's not really an attendance component since we're online, so it's not going to be the case where I will be dropping students. You need to make sure that if you decide to drop the class, you do it yourself. Finally, uh, another important one is making sure you're responsible for the announcements that come out. Um, like I said, I try to double send them once via Canvas and once via email, but make sure you check both your El Camino email as well as our Canvas page regularly. Um, I generally also try to remind you guys several times about each upcoming sort of assignment or due date. I also always try to bold the due date so you know what's sort of uh, coming up, but definitely make sure you check your El Camino email and your Canvas page on a regular basis. All right, how can you be successful in this sort of course? Well. Math 150 is a very unique class. It's going to be sort of unlike any other math class you've probably taken. Um, it is really an intersection of a math course, a science course, as well as sort of a social science course, because we're going to be doing a lot of stuff where we have to not only sort of do computations or perform mathematical operations, but also interpret and understand the results. So the number one sort of cornerstone to success here is keeping up with the material. You guys have a tremendous amount of content that you'll have access to. You'll have lecture videos, you have course notes, you have practice exercises, you have review guides for the exams, you have a lot that you can make use of. However, 
if you let all that sort of pile up and you wait until the exams, that changes from a benefit to sort of a downside, right? Is that you'll have so much that as you sort of look at that it can be very overwhelming. So if you keep up with the material, you watch the videos on a regular basis, you read the course notes on a regular basis, you should find our class very manageable. Make sure that you also try the associated exercises. The lecture videos and the course notes are what would be sort of considered passive learning. They're you getting to watch something or listen to something and, and trying to take in as much of that information as possible. But the associated exercises where you get to try things yourself, that's really the active learning component. You want to make sure you have a balance of both of those types of learning styles as you're taking our class. Second cornerstone, this one, maybe this should really be tied for first in terms of how important it is, taking good notes. Like I said, there is a tremendous amount of content in terms of the stuff that you get to see for our class. Organizing that into your own notes is going to be essential. You're going to have access to your notes for all the assignments, the quizzes, the midterms, the final. That means if you have good notes that are well organized and meaningful to you, meaning that you've put them in your style and your words, that's going to make everything much easier. Studying adequately before the exams, of course, 80% um, of our grade in this class is determined by exams, either the midterm or the final. So certainly you want to make sure you take each exam seriously. For exams, you get a review guide specifically catered to that exam. So you'll want to make sure that uh, the sort of week before an exam, you have a lot of time to dedicate to making sure you go through that review guide thoroughly. Ask any questions that you might have about it. Attend any of the online office hours to get additional help. You really want to make sure you're prepared for each of the exams. And then finally, making use of resources. We have, like I said, office hours each week. You have your Canvas discussion boards. You have the textbook, i.e. the course notes. You have the other students in the class. I know it's a fully online class, so reaching out to each other can be a little bit harder. But again, I hope that the discussion boards make that a little bit more doable. Certainly try to make use of as many resources as you can to have this be as beneficial of an educational experience as possible. Finally, a couple little uh, last components here, academic honesty, right? Uh, so do make sure that, you know, on things like the take home quizzes, you're obviously allowed to discuss them with each other, but on things like the midterms or the finals, you're not allowed to discuss them with anybody. So any evidence of that can result in a failing grade on that assignment or exam, and there can be other disciplinary actions. So in other words, be very honest with your academic work here. There's also the uh, student with special needs and ADA statement. Uh, something I'd just like to say here is that uh, at this Math 150 class, uh, to me, is one of the absolutely most beneficial math classes we teach here at El Camino because it is incredibly applicable to pretty much any every major and every discipline. Um, so for me, that means that I want to try to make sure that you guys all benefit individually as much as possible from our course. So like I said at the beginning, I try to tailor some of the examples we do uh, depending on what your majors or what your interests are. Uh, it also means that if you need any sort of additional resources or support, you let me know and I'll try to accommodate you as best as possible because I think this is an incredibly beneficial course and I want you guys all to get as much as you can from it. Finally, on the last page, uh, there is a tentative schedule here. Uh, a lot of these uh, sort of names here are the names that correspond to the course notes. So you can sort of see how we're going to be moving through each of these pieces. Uh, you'll also notice that I've reminded you that the midterms each occur in week four. 4, 8, and 12, and then of course our final exam in week 16. This is a tentative schedule because uh, depending on how quickly we go through these things, we may phase in and out of being exactly on this schedule, but the things that won't change are the order of these topics. So as you're reading through the course notes or watching the lecture videos, you know this is exactly the order we're going to be following, and also when those exams occur. Those exam dates are set in stone. Thursdays of week 4, 8, 12, and week 16, the final exam. So this ends sort of our introduction to our class. In our first actual content video, we'll actually have a bit of more of a discussion of what statistics really is, why it's important, and start giving ourselves some basic definitions.